what I'd like to talk about right now is something that I consider to be one of the most important subjects on the earth today <clears throat> in the world of religion. And that is, what does it mean and where did it come from? And what are you talking about? The subject is the kingdom of God. All the churches talk about the kingdom of God. The Christians talk about God's kingdom. And uh, and, and we're hearing from the uh, Islamic world, you know, the kingdom of Allah, God's kingdom in the heaven. And so we've heard about the God's kingdom and the kingdom of God for ad nauseum for years. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what the kingdom of God actually is. And I don't care what you think about it. It doesn't matter what you think. If you do the homework, like I have for 60 years, live in libraries and read and study, photocopy documents, talk with all the experts, do the research, over a period of many, many years, it will finally, finally dawn on you what the word kingdom of God really is. <clears throat> and there's a lot of interesting stuff that you've never thought about. I have problems with my lungs, as you can probably tell, and I have to cough, and I'm sorry about that. But I've had a very bad situation with my lungs and my heart. <clears throat> and I may not be here much longer because of it. But anyway, I do want to lay this one out for you and break it down for you. For the first time, understand when you hear the word God's kingdom <clears throat> or the kingdom of God, what does it actually mean? First of all, the word kingdom of God are words that we humans come up with. <clears throat> it's not chiseled in stone in heaven. It's something we use. It's something adults come up with. We call it God's kingdom. Well, first of all, you have to understand, as I said, these are human words, all right? In our human society, <clears throat> We put things into categories, and so we put different life forms into categories. Uh, we, we talk about cattle or in herds. So when you people talk about herds, uh, people think about cattle or in herds. Uh, bees are in swarms. Uh, fish are in schools. Uh, owls are in parliaments. Uh, <clears throat> But what kind of life form on the earth, uh, I could go on for, for an hour just naming off all the different kinds of life forms and the term we have for the general subject of that life, particular life form. Right, like crows are in murders. Exactly. Yeah. So what is it on this earth that we humans all agree is in a kingdom? Hmm? Think about it. What is it that we humans, when we talk about the uh, uh, the answer in uh, answer in hills and ant hills and fish are in schools and uh, and uh, cattle are in are in herds and uh, there's a lot more stuff but I can't remember all of it. Is that what is it that we humans all agree upon? Uh, anywhere in the world you go, they will agree upon agreed upon that this particular life form is in a kingdom. What kind of animal, or what kind of life form is in, an, uh, is in a kingdom? Have you ever thought about that? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, a couple of thoughts I have there. First, uh, you know, it usually means that there is a king atop the structure of the organization. Uh, that's, you know, I mean, obvious, I know I'm being Mr. Obvious here, but there is a king, right? And, uh, sometimes there are descriptions like the animal kingdom, uh, where there's a hierarchy. Precisely, uh, precisely. It's an animal. Animals are what we humans say are in a kingdom. The fish are in schools, you know, and, and uh, cattle are in herds and, you know, we can go down the line and name up all the other kind of life forms and what they what we call them and the, the collectively. But it is, it is the animals which we say are in a kingdom. Okay, now 
the animals are in a kingdom, the kingdom of animals. Now, where do you find animals? Animals are related to, in the ancient Greek, and I do mean ancient Greek. The ancient Greeks put the called the animals, uh, a place connected to animals is called a zoo. So that's where you have the animals are in a zoo. And so if you're going to go study the animals, you go to a zoo. All the different animals are there at one place, and it's called a zoo, from which, you get, from which we get the word zoo-diac or a zodiac. The zodiac, look it up in a Webster's Dictionary, look up the word and the word zodiac in a dictionary. Anybody can do that. Just open up a dictionary and look up the word. It's on the Z, zodiac. And it will tell you it's the kingdom of animals because the zodiac is a bunch of animals uh, and, uh, and the symbols in the, in the zodiac are symbols of animals, okay? <clears throat> this is where we get the word zoo and, and zodiac is from a zoo. And so the zoo is God's kingdom of animals. And the kingdom of animals is the zoo, the yak, or the zodiac. So now for the first time, understand that when you say God's kingdom, you're talking about the zodiac. Because where is God's kingdom? Well, it's in heaven. You bet your life it's in heaven. It's not here on the earth, it's in heaven. And then Jesus says, when you pray, we call it today, we say it's the Lord's Prayer. No, it's not the Lord's Prayer. That's, a, that's an incorrect term. The Lord told you when you pray, not me as the Lord, but when you pray, you pray this way. So it's not the Lord's Prayer. It's the prayer the Lord told you to pray. And so he said, when you pray, you say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And here it comes. Let thy kingdom come, and let thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And so what you're saying in Christianity, if you go back and do the research on ancient Christianity, you will see that the ancient Christians held the zodiac to be the symbol for God's kingdom, the kingdom of the zodiac or the kingdom of the zoo animals. The animals of the zoo are zodiac. And so, therefore, analyze what you're saying when you're praying the Father prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, yes, is in heaven, not here on the earth, and hallowed be thy name, let thy kingdom come. What kingdom? The kingdom of animals. The zodiac. The zodiac. Oh, that's why Jesus had 12 apostles. Because he had 12 apostles. Why? Because there are 12 signs of the zodiac. There are 12 months in the year. And if you look at that uh, picture that was painted of the Last Supper, that shows Jesus sitting in the middle of 12 uh, people at dinner with him. It's called the Last Supper, the Last Passover meal. And to Jesus' right, if you'll see the picture, go on the, go on the web and look at the picture of the Last Supper, a very famous painting. You will see on his right, next to him on his right, first of all, there are 12 apostles but they are divided into threes. There are three apostles talking with each other. Then there are three more talking with each other. Then there's Jesus in the middle. And there's two more uh, groups of three talking to each other. So there's actually four different groups of three apostles each, which makes four times three is 12, which is actually telling you that God's Son, the light of the world, is between the 12 signs of the zodiac. Where, as I said, on the right-hand side of Jesus in the picture of the Last Supper is a woman. Go back and see it. It's a woman. What is a woman doing there with the 12 apostles? Well, look at the painting. The artist who painted the painting was not stupid. He made it into a woman. 
Why is one of the twelve apostles a woman? Simple, because one of the twelve signs of the zodiac is is a Virgo, Virgo the Virgin. And so this is why she sits at his right hand. She's the Virgin. And so Jesus was born of a virgin. No, the son was born of Virgo, the constellation of Virgo, the virgin, the holy mother. And this is why the Catholic Church is into the holy mother. And her her name was Mary, M-A-R-Y, Mary, the mother of No, incorrect. Go back and do your homework. You made a mistake. It's not M-A-R-Y, Mary. It's M-A-R-I, Mari. Mari is, a, is an ancient word which means pure. Anything which is absolutely pure, if you get the highly, highly uh, filtered water, we call it Mari water because it's very pure water. So the word pure was M-A-R-I, Mari, not Mary. And so today we know that the virgin is a, is a word for a woman uh, that's never had sex with a man, so she's pure. And so her name was Mari, no Mary, no Mari. And so Jesus has an apostle sitting next to him on his right, which is a woman, which represents one of the 12 signs of the zodiac, Virgo, the virgin. And so you begin to see that the 12 signs of the zodiac, you're saying to God, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Well, it, you, you, it's just that you are acquiescing to and you are agreeing to God to let his will be done on the earth. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. What are you talking about your will be done? Because each one of those 12 signs of the zodiac dominate earth and the solar system and our world, our human world is dominated by the 12 signs of the zodiac and each sign of the zodiac is 2150 years long and so if you go on the equator and look eastward at the equator you will see the sun come up in the east and when it rises in the morning at the equator you will see there's a group of stars that the sun is rising in front of and each one of those uh, every 2,150 years, there's a different set of stars at the equator. Looking east, you will see a different set of stars. And the sun is rising in those set of stars. So as, if it's rising in Taurus, we say the sun is a, is a, is a golden calf. That the Hebrews worship the golden calf, golden for the sun, and the calf for Taurus, the bull. Then later on, we have the Jews blowing the ram's horn. And so the, what's the next sign of the zodiac? Aries, the ram. So now we have the ram god, Abram, Abram. And so the Jews blow the ram's horn. Now what's the next sign of the zodiac? Well, the next one is, uh, is uh, Pisces, the two fish. Well, we say that Jesus was the great fisherman. He was the great fisherman. And he fed his crowd, the Bible says in Luke. He fed the people who followed him with two fish. Two fish? What is the symbol of Pisces? Oh, it's two fish. Oh, so now we see that Jesus is God's son, and he's officiating life on the earth and in the universe in the signs of the zodiac. Well, what's the next sign after the two fish? Because that's where we are today. We're living in the age of Pisces, the two fish. And as and I will remind you that in Jerusalem, about ten years ago, uh, the 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 Israeli government was going to build a new wing onto a prison in this area called Megiddo. Go on the web and talk uh, church. And you will see that the, uh, Israel was going to build a new uh, wing onto a prison in the ghetto. And so they sent out the, uh, the people to drill down and cut down into the ground and prepare to lay the concrete and prepare to lay the foundation for the new floor. And But when they were dig digging down, they hit the floor that's already there. 
and it was in the news that the Israel d- discovered, and, the, and what they said is Israel has discovered the single oldest Christian church ever built on the earth, period, end of sentence. The single oldest church ever built in this world, uh, Christian church, was found in Megiddo in, in, uh, in Israel. And they show you pictures of the of the floor that these construction workers found when they were digging down to lay a foundation. And what is in the middle of that floor is a huge, big mosaic floor. And in the middle of that floor, a large, large mosaic uh, of two fish going opposite directions. That's the two fish of Pisces. And Israel, America, England, all the big shots that know everything about everything, they said that was the oldest single Christian church ever found on the earth ever. And what was on the middle of the floor? Two fish. What are the two fish there? Well, Jesus said he, he fed the, he fed the multitude with two fish. The two fish are the two fish of Pisces. The astrological, one of the twelve signs of the zodiac, one of the twelve apostles of Christ. And so the bottom line here today that we still are in the age of Pisces, but we're coming to the end of it. This is 2118, 2018. So we are 2000 years into the 2150 years of Pisces, but we've already got through the first 2000 years. So there's only 150 years left, and out of that, we've already gone through 18. So now we're we're getting, you know, we're getting close, relatively speaking. We're getting close to the end. So that's why the Christian church today is preaching throughout the world. These are the time of the end. This is the end times. These are the last days. The last days of the end times. It's going to be horrible, terrible things coming because it's the end times and the last days. The last days of what? The last days of the age of Pisces, the two fish. And that's why Moses was telling the, the, the Jewish, the Israel, uh, you know, in the story, Moses is trying to tell Israel that I'm going up to get a new commandment, the new the new commandment, which will start a new religion. And he comes down, and he sees the Israel still worshiping the golden calf, golden sun calf Taurus. So the sun is in the age of Taurus, and Moses comes down and says, "No, God said there's going to be a new age, a new a whole new way to worship me." And from now on, you're going to have to blow a ram's horn. And it's going to be the age of the ram, Aries, the ram. And so the Jews told Moses, no, we're going to stick with what we know. We've, we've always worshipped God as a golden calf. And so we don't care about this new thing that you're talking about. So that's all that new age bull, bull crap of your new age. We don't, we're not interested in your new age. Well, God's will is going to come on the earth whether you like it or not and so you ask God let your kingdom come and your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven well in heaven we were Moses said in heaven uh, uh, God changing the arrangement now from the golden calf the sun in Taurus to now we're going to have a new sun uh, for 2,150 years, it's going to be in the age of Aries, the ram, the ram god, Abram, Abram or Abraham. And so the new, the new age, the Jew says, all a bunch of bull, we don't want to hear all that crap about this new age stuff. Well, that's what God said, it's a new age, and his will is going to come on the earth, whether you like it or not, no matter what you say, that new age is coming. Why? Because it's God's will, not yours. He put the 12 signs of the zodiac into the heavens. That's what he says in the book of Job. I put the 12 signs of the, in the heavens, the 12 signs of the zodiac. Now, what are you going to do about it? It's my work in the heavens. I put it there. And so, therefore, today we are now, as I said, in the age of the two fish, which is the age of religion. 
And that's what we are today. That's all we are on this earth is religious. We don't have the faintest idea in the world how to spell spiritual or what that means. We are only religious. Well, that's what Pisces means. <clears throat> Two fish going in opposite directions. And that's what we are. Every, every religion is going in opposite direction. And so then in the book of Luke 12, Luke 10, 22, I think it is, 10, 22 of Luke, <clears throat> the scripture says that the 12 looked at Jesus. They said, Master, since you're going to now die, and you've said that you're going to die, and you're going to leave the world, you know, you, you symbolize the two fish, so you are God's son. So we're saying symbolically, to the sun, we know that you're going to die now in the age of Pisces. So in Luke 22:10, it says in the Bible, they asked Jesus, where are we to go? Where are you going to go? Where, where are we going to go? What, what's going on here if you're going to die? And he said, go into the city. Luke 22:10. go into the city and you will see a man carrying a water pitcher. Go into the house of the man with the water pitcher. That's the house of Aquarius, the man with the water pitcher. Now, to add to that, the fact that in the ancient world, in the Middle East, men never carried water ever, period. All the reference works and dictionaries, encyclopedias, and Bible reference works will tell you men would never carry a, a pail of water. That was a woman's job. And any man found or seen carrying a pitcher of water was was quickly chastised for that. That is a woman's job. You look you look like a fool carrying water. Don't you understand? That's a woman's job. So you look like a woman doing that. You you you, you betrayed your masculinity. Let the woman carry the water. Well, that's why Jesus always found the women at the well. <clears throat> look in the look in the history of the world. Women have always carried the water in, in Russia, and in Egypt today, and in all the Middle East. Women carry water, not men. Well, why did Jesus say, "Go into the city, and you will see a man carrying a pitcher of water"? Go into the house of the man with the water pitcher. Simple. Aquarius is a symbol of the house of the man with the water pitcher. The Bible is trying to tell you, but you are too ignorant, ill-informed, self-centered, unread, and downright ignorant to understand God's symbols are in heaven. This is why you have 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 brothers of Joseph, the 12 stones and the breastplate of the high priest, <clears throat> the 12 this and the 12 that. Twelve is very important. It's still important today. We have twelve hours of light with God's Son. Then you have twelve hours with the Prince of Darkness. He's called Set in Egypt. That's why, because it gets dark at sunset. So once you understand sunset is the Prince of Darkness or Darth Vader, and uh, and and so it's twelve hours of darkness and twelve hours of light. The war between light and darkness. Jesus is God's son, the light of the world, and Set is the evil dark lord, uh, you know, God, uh, the the devil, who is the prince of darkness. So the bottom line at the end of the day is quite simply this: God's kingdom is the twelve signs of the zodiac. And just to God, just to Jesus' right hand at the at the uh, Last Supper, you will see a woman, long-haired woman. She represents Virgo, the virgin. This is why Jesus is said to have been born of a virgin. Goes back to uh, the the coming of spring, and spring was connected to Virgo, the virgin. So God's son is born of a virgin. All of these stories you hear about the about Jesus and Christianity, it's all zodiac. It's the twelve signs of the zodiac, the twelve brothers of Joseph, the twelve apostles. Wake up and understand for the first time, God's kingdom is the kingdom of animals in the the heavens. 
and you say, let your will be done. Well, I've got news for you. It's going to be done, whether you like it or not. So you're just showing that you are proving of what's going to happen, whether you like it or not. So you say, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Well, yeah, well, right now it is in heaven. The, the constellation at the, uh, at the equator is uh, the, the two fish of Pisces. And so you're saying, well, let God's kingdom come and let the will, uh, the will of God, uh, the, the symbol of Pisces, let it dominate the earth and your will be done. Well, I got news for you. It's going to come and it's going to have its will done, period, because God put it there. So the bottom line is God's kingdom is the zodiac. Now, part two to this, equally important is that if you go into the dictionary or encyclopedias of history, go to the, any one of the big encyclopedias of world history, there are all kinds of them, and look at the first century AAD, the first century, uh, uh, you know, this is 2,000 years ago now, we're 2,018 years into the last of the, of the Piscean age. But go back to the very first century, and you will see that the Christians, what were Christians called? What was the term that the ancient Romans uh, called the Christians? That's interesting. When you go back into the Roman Empire and find out the term that Christians were called, they were referred to, and you'll see this if you do, bother to do the research, you will see Christians were referred to in Rome. And all over the Roman Empire, Christians were called the followers of the way. W-A-Y, the followers of the way. And that's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the light. I am the way and the truth is uh, and, and the light, and I'm the one that enlightens you. Why? I enlighten you with the zodiac. I'm teaching you how the universe operates, the stars in heaven. And so the, uh, I looked that up. In a dictionary, look that up on the web. Christians call followers of the way. And then also look up in the dictionary on the web, the religion called, quote, the way, end quote. And you will find that the way was a term which was used by the ancient Greeks and the Phoenicians and Canaanites and all the people of the Middle East. They called the zodiac the way because it was showing the way the sun moves through 12 signs of the zodiac, which is in heaven. And so it was referred to as the way. The way is a term that is used in the ancient world for the zodiac. Go and get a dictionary and look up the word, the way, end quote. And it will tell you that was a symbol for the a word that was used for the zodiac. And Jesus said, I am the way. And then if you go to Jeremiah 6.16, where God is talking to the people, and it says, Thus saith the Lord, stand you in the way, and see and ask for the old path, which is the old way, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your soul. But they have said, no, we will not walk in the way, end quote. Another Bible uh, translation says, Thus saith the Lord, stand by the roads and look, ask for the ancient path, ask for the way, and where, where the good way is, and then walk in the ancient way. Go back to the old way for your souls. But the people said, no, we will not walk in the way. And so today, the people are not walking in the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus is the Son. He's administering the earth and life on the earth through his 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year. So the bottom line is astrology is God's way. And you have better think about it. Before you condemn something, before you condemn it and say it's Luciferian or it's of the devil, you better go back and do your homework because the Bible says God told Peter, you stop calling down evil upon the things which I have created. 
Peter was always finding fault with different peoples and different ideas and different creation. And God says, you stop calling down evil upon what I have created. In other words, go back and do your homework, Arrowhead, and find out what you're talking about before you go cursing God with your mouth. Because one day you may have to, uh, you may have to uh, you know, deal with that. And the next, when you leave this world, you may have to deal with something you don't even know is going on in the universe. And it's called the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Look it up in a dictionary. Quote, the way, end quote. So the bottom line, I'm telling you, God's kingdom is the zodiac, the way. And Jesus is a son, and he said, I am the way. Why? Because the, the 12 signs of the zodiac are in relation to the path of the sun around the year. And so the path of the sun was called the way. Why? Because it goes through 12 signs. So the bottom line is, for all Christians and all people who love God, you better go back and do your homework because you are worshiping the wrong God. You are, If you're a Catholic, you're worshiping Dagon, D-A-G-O-N, Dagon. If you're Protestant, you're worshiping Dagon, but you're also worshiping Zeus. So Zeus is the God of the Bible. Today, the Old Testament is the Bible Testament about Zeus, the God Zeus. And you go back and look in Job, and you will see that Job was worshiping the god Zeus. And the ancient peoples that, that are in the Old Testament were worshipers of the god Zeus. The whole Middle East was worshiping the god Zeus. Zeus in Latin becomes Deus, D-E-U-S. Instead of uh, Zeus, Z-E-U-S, it's D-E-U-S. Zeus is Deus in, in Latin. And Deus and Latin becomes God. So today, when you see the Catholic Church is worshiping God, Dios, no, they're worshiping Zeus. And Zeus is connected to the worship of Dagon, D-A-G-O-N, Dagon. This is why your religion, Christianity, Judaism, Islam are all killing each other. They're all filled with lies, pornography, you know, child sacrifice, murder, violence, drug addiction. The world of mankind is lying in the power of a demon, of devils. The religions of this world are demonic depravity. Mm. And people are too arrogant, self-centered, egotistical, and do not want to admit that they have spent their whole life worshiping demonic demons and devils, and today we're seeing it all occurring all around the world. Violence, bloodshed, and the people of the earth are not totally stupid. They know something is wrong, and they know it. So they have to turn to alcoholism, drinking, drugs, to violent sports, to sex, drugs, music, making money, entertaining themselves because they know Spiritually speaking, the world we live in has lost its way. There is no God. There is no spirituality. There is nothing now but what we have created for ourselves, a religion. And when one person gets stuck on, on, on an idea that's, that's ludicrous, but people get stuck on these uh, illusions, we call it insanity. But when a whole nation gets stuck on an illusion, we call it religion. So the bottom line is that our religions have been given to us by the same people who gave us our educational institutions, our banking, our insurance companies, our governmental system, and who have put together our military-industrial complex and control the earth through communication, through words and terms, and give us our, our laws and our court system, and they also give you your religion. Wake up. The entire world is lost, and it's not going to get any better because you're worshiping the wrong gods. It's an incredible story about how mankind is self-centered, egotistical, and will not, and refuses, and will not accept the fact that they have made a mistake. They have screwed up and made a mistake, and that's why the whole entire world today is at war with each other. Right. Families are breaking up. You know, marriages are being broken up. The children are on drugs. The children are leaving home. 
The kids are violent, end up in biker gangs and, and street violence and drug addiction and wars and crime. The whole system of the earth is corrupt. And the reason why is because we're self-centered, egotistical, and too ignorant to figure out the mundane truth that God says back in Jeremiah 6, go back to the old way. So that's the bottom line. Astrology is God's kingdom, period. 